Hi guys, welcome to a new video. Here I'm making blue ochre, also known as Vivianite blue. This is a genuine mineral pigment that I have from Colibri, and it is quite a coarse pigment. So I'm showing you the entire process, everything I do when making a new paint and a new pigment, um, working with a new pigment. So I'm showing you all the steps. Since I don't have this pigment yet in my shop, it will be in the very near future. Here I'm mixing the pigment with the binder. And this is just wetting the pigment, as I call it. It's just mixing it, making sure that all the pigment particles are wet. But this is not yet a dispersed paint. Also, as I said before, it's quite a coarse pigment. So I'm not only dispersing the pigment into the binder, I'm also making it finer with my muller on my plate. As you can see, I'm using circular motions to have a bit better control on the pressure that I put down on the plate, as well as working a little bit tidier. I noticed when I'm going up and down or sideways, my hand tends to slip off the muller, and I end up with a blue hand, which is lovely, though not while making paint. This is not my actual speed. <laughs> this is 20 times sped up. And as you can see, it takes a lot of work for this pigment to mill into the right consistency. Here, I'm using the Hackman gauge for the first time during the process to see how far I am. And I'm not far enough. So the Hackman gauge is meant for checking how well your paint is dispersed into the pigment, how evenly it is dispersed, as well as for mineral pigments, how fine the pigment particles are. In this case, I'm mulling for grinding it and dispersing it. So although this is a quite well dispersed paint, the particles are still too coarse to use as a watercolor paint. It would rub off the paper quite easily. That having said, I actually like the coarseness of genuine mineral pigments um, when compared to synthetic pigments, which are way fine. I can ne never get a mineral pigment as fine as a synthetic pigment on my plate with the tools that I have. And I don't want that. I want people to see that this is actual mineral pigment that came from a mineral, came from a rock. And uh, it's something out of nature. It shows all the qualities of a mineral pigment on paper. And I actually like this. This is just a bit finer than I had before. And in this pigment uh, case, it doesn't really matter how fine you go for the color. For lapis lazuli, for instance, when you go too fine, it gets less blue. Here I'm swatching it. And as you can see, it has a lovely denim-like blue quality to it. It leans to the warmer side of blue as you can see later on the reading of my spectrometer. And I've sped up this part as well, where you can see it dry, see the pigment particles sink in. There's a nice granulation, and it also has a slight shimmer to it. I'm filling the pants marked with NA. It doesn't stand for natural, but for not applicable. So there's no pigment number for this particular pigment. 
So for pigments without a pigment number, NA is on the pants. Here I'm reading it, and as you can see, quite a lot of red and near-infrared wavelengths. And to end the video, the pigment under polarized light and crossed polarized light. Hope you like it. Uh, please subscribe, like this video, and see you next time.